So hello and welcome back. Today we will have lecture 3-1A on probabilistic motion models. The learning objectives for today's lecture include describing the difference between a motion model and a sensor model, describing the difference between two typical motion models, including odometry-based and velocity-based, to discuss how to approximate odometry-based motion model noise error, to calculate the posterior probability of X given X prime and U, and to discuss how to sample the probability of X given X prime and U, and finally to extend our motion model that takes the map into account. There will be two days of lecture on probabilistic motion models, and then we will have two days of lecture on probabilistic sensor models. Please come along and enjoy. Please note that a lot of the content from this class is based upon the text, Probabilistic Robotics, written by Sebastian Thrun, Dieter Fox, and Wolfram Burgard. If you want to know more about their work, please check out the website, probabilisticrobotics.org. So given Bayes filter and models for modeling motion and sensing, we use the following formula. The belief of XT times the normalization constant eta times the probability of a given measurement ZT times the state XT times the summation of all the previous states, the probability of the current state XT given the input control UT, the previous state X of T minus one, times the belief of X of T minus one. This is the formula that we derived and discussed in the previous week's lecture. We call the term, the probability of ZT given XT, our perception model. And we call the term, the summation of the probability of XT given our control and the previous state, our motion model. So assume we have a robot that was steered with a joystick that has wheel encoders. And the robot's motion is inherently uncertain. We know this from odometry error. How can we model this uncertainty? That's what we're doing today. And we're using probabilities to do that because although ideally, this is how the robot was driven in the world on this map, this may be the robot's belief of where it thinks it is or how it moved. And we know that's localization error and it's essentially built upon this odometry error. So the dynamic Bayesian network for control states and sensations, we've seen this before, is given by, if the robot is at a state X of T minus one, you give an input control at U T minus one, and then you take a measurement Z T minus one, and then the robot moves to the next state. So for every state, we have a control input U and a measurement Z. And this creates that motion model and eventually that measurement that we use for finding the belief of where the robot feels its current state is or the state of the world. So a motion model is comprised of the state transition probability, which plays a role in predicting each step of the Bayes filter. So that's the probability that I am in state X at time T, given a control input at time T and my previous state T minus one, whereas the sensor model is based upon sensor measurements and updates, and they update at every step. So that's the probability that the robot is in state T given a measurement at time T. So recall that in kinematics, that is the calculus that describes the effect of a control action on the configuration of the robot. And so for our kinematic model, the X axis goes directly out the front of the robot and the Y axis goes over the robot's left wheel. So the robot's pose in the world will be represented by X, Y, and theta, where X and Y are the location and theta is the orientation. So in a Cartesian coordinate plane, we would have X, Y, and Z, and we're assuming our robot is not a hovercraft, it's a motion robot that moves on the floor, so there's no Z, and that the other angles are roll, pitch, and yaw. So for ours, it's just going to be a yaw angle, which is the orientation. And so the pose is the robot's relative position in a two-dimensional plane or coordinate, along with the angular um, orientation as we've already described before as X, Y, and theta. Whereas if we were talking about just the robot's location, that is the same as the pose without orientation. So that would just be X comma Y. 
The pose and location of objects in the environment may constitute the kinematic state of XT of the robot environment system. So the state may not only include how the robot's moving through the world, but how the world is changing or being affected by the robot as it moves through the world. So for the probabilistic motion model, that plays a role in the state transition model in the, of the mobile robot because we look at the control input and we look at the previous state in order to determine the next one. So notice there are two notations we have here and they mean the same thing. So the probability of X given U and X prime. So X prime is the same as the previous state where X is the current state and U is the same as UT, which is the input at the time T. So this specifies the posterior probability that an action U carried out by the robot will take it from X prime to X. So in this section, we will specify the model and the motion equations and the algorithm to be able to calculate the state for the robot. So the posterior distribution of the robot's pose based upon execution of a motion command is shown below. So assume that the robot is at a state X prime and it gives a linear or move straight command and then it stops at this end. This banana shape here is a plot of all of the probabilities of where the robot could possibly be. The darker sh the shade is, the more of a probability that the robot would be there. Notice that it's a little bit more clear when the robot moves straight, but we know when a robot makes a lot of turns or a lot of curves, the probability is going to be a little less. So that's what the second example is, where the probability of the robot could be, there's the darker space is more dis dispersed because there's more possible places for error. So this is called a banana shape distribution is obtained from a 2D projection of a 3D posterior where I am most concerned with the location or the X and Y location, possible places the robot could be. So that there, there are two typical mo motion models. One of them is odometry based and one of them is velocity based. Velocity based is the same as dead reckoning where you are assuming you give the robot a forward direction and then you're just estimating it getting there. And they are you, and whereas the odometry base is normally used with robots that are equipped with wheel encoders. So it's not purely dead reckoning. You can actually estimate a little bit of how accurate the robot was by reading the encoder data. So velocity based models have to be applied when you don't have any wheel encoders on your robot. And they are used to calculate the new pose of the robot based upon velocity and time. Odometry models tend to be more accurate than velocity models because there is a way to actually measure the revolution of the robot's wheels, as you can imagine. And the way you do that is wheel encoder. So a wheel encoder is basically an electronic device that you would then attach to your motors or attached to the wheels that it looks like a lot like a disc. It's normally powered between zero and five volts. And essentially you have a measurement device that is measuring the black to white transitions as the wheel or the motor spins. And based, of, based upon that, it can estimate how many rotations the robot has moved forward or backwards or how fast the robot's moving. And from that, you can compare that to the command that was given and you can correlate between the two of them how closely match were the wheel movements with the um, input. So the term dead reckoning is actually derived from deduce reckoning, and it's a mathematical procedure for determining the present location of a vehicle. It was essentially moved, used a lot with um, people on ships because it was achieved by calculating the current pose of a vehicle, given its velocity and the time that elapsed, where should it be? And it was used to log the position of ships as I stated before. So what are some of the reasons for error uh, in wheeled mobile robots? We've discussed these before. Um, the ideal case is the motors are ideally matched. The um, diameter of the wheels is exactly the same. They have the same motor power. The surface is completely level, even, etc. But more likely, the surface is going to be bumpy. It's going to be uh, different wheel diameters, the motors are going to have different power, or um, 
the robot may be on carpet and when the robot turns on carpet, it may slide left and right or it may drift. When it goes over bumpy surfaces, one wheel will move more than the other, etc. So what you really wanna be able to do is have a stochastic way of modeling these errors to help you to estimate your robot's location even when you are confronted with these types of issues. So the odometry model. So the robot is going to move from an initial state, x t minus one, denoted by x bar, y bar, theta bar, to a final state, x t, denoted by x bar prime, y bar prime, theta bar prime. And the odometry information will be given to the robot in terms of two rotations and a translation, where we're assuming that the robot needs to initially rotate towards the goal, then it needs to translate to the goal, and then we need a second rotation to put the robot in the correct orientation once it arrives there. So it moves towards the goal, turns, turns towards the goal, moves to the goal, and then turns to correct its orientation. And here's what this would look like, where the green represents the starting position for the robot and the red represents the final position for the robot. So we have X bar, Y bar, theta bar, and then the robot rotates by delta rot, rot one, then it translates by delta translate, and then it's at its final position and it rotates once again to correct the orientation. And the formulas that we use for these, um, the first one is the translation, which is just the Euclidean distance. So it's the square root of X bar prime minus X bar squared plus Y bar prime minus Y bar squared. And it's the arc tangent of y bar minus y, x bar minus x minus theta bar for the initial rotation. And for the final rotation, it would be the desired rotation minus the current rotation minus how much it rotated for delta rot one. So a couple more differences between the odometry versus the velocity velocity motion model. The odometry is based upon integrating wheel coder information, as we've said before. Odometry motion model uses odometry measurements instead of controls like a velocity motion model. Even with errors, it's more accurate than the velocity motion model because although they both suffer from drift and wheel slippage as the robot moves through the world, the velocity motion model will also possibly have a mismatch between the motion controller and the mathematic, mathematical model as well. Odometry is only available after the robot moves because we use the wheel encoders to measure how far it's moved. So therefore, it is ideal or works better for filter algorithms like localization and mapping. However, it is unusable for accurate motion planning and control and in those cases, you would want to use a velocity-based motion model. And this concludes our initial lecture on the probabilistic motion model. I hope you've enjoyed and have a great day.